Hello, everybody. Um, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are, and welcome to this session um, on crafting digital content uh, for your product, project, or um, any government policy that you have. In this session, we're going to understand why content is important and its relevance to business development. Um, also look at some of the strategies, the tools, and how best to plan your contact, the content delivery process and some tools that um, techniques that you can employ within the modern digital landscape to have the highest impact um, for any content uh, um, strategy that you want to have. So um, in this presentation, we're going to look at first why co quality and compelling content uh, matters. Then in terms of the content strategy, you look at what are the types of content um, and how best to identify your target audience um, in terms of segmentation, the content creation process, and also content distribution and promotion. Um, after that, we'll focus on some of the channels and tools through which you can um, distribute and promote your content for um, having the desired impact and how to measure the success, some of the challenges relating to um, content delivery and content strategy, and then we'll take you an A before ending the session. I, I would I always say that quality content um, is king uh, within the digital landscape. So um, you just don't produce any content, but one that is of higher quality would have the maximum impact and would also deliver the higher ROI. It is becoming expensive and crowded within the digital space. And so you must focus on having quality content that would give you the desired impact. Um, why do you need uh, content? You know, increasingly, and within the advanced digital age, content is becoming one of the most um, valuable um, assets that a company can have in terms of uh, marketing. Um, I would say it's becoming the digital gold. And so once you have good and um, quality um, content out there, you are sure to build your company, to build strong relationships, have the right audience that can partner you in your business and increase brand awareness but also generate leads and business conversions in terms of revenue um, coming that come from customers. Some of the objectives of a good content strategy, um, I would say one is to increase the brand awareness. So every brand um, needs some visibility and content is one of the ways to let um, the, the general public know about you, about your business and what you stand for and whether to partner or buy your goods or your service or even to access some government services. But it's also needed to build trust, um, you know, among the clients um, and letting them know you are the authority or you are somebody um, who they can trust and to deliver the service in a better way other than the competitors. And so um, how you craft your content strategy, how you tailor it to the target audience is also key to building that trust. Third is um, you want to also get leads, right? Customers and also and engage them. And so it doesn't have to be a one-way street where you um, provide the services, but um, the customers also need to um, hear from you in terms of content. And also you need to get input from the customers in terms of reviews that they give you, which is content as well. And so this is also important um, why you should have a content strategy. The next is the um, you, you also need to educate and inform, and this is mostly uh, with businesses that are into advocacy or um, providing information. So the content you put out is for educating and informing the um, the public, your customers, and also all your partners. And so um, you would want to tailor such a content differently. Go in depth, but provide quality in terms of what you are delivering to customers. Um, fifth is you want to also attract the right partners for your business. And so content is a way of letting people know that you are in the space, you are capable of offering these services, but it also gives you the competitive advantage. Take, for instance, Google search. If you have good quality content that is indexed by Google, then it means you rank top in searches, you become competitive, and also through word of mouth, people get to know what you are doing um, through whatever content medium that you have, which we are going to look at later. But um, these are some of the um, objectives of why you should have a good content delivery strategy for your business. The question then is, you know, why is digital content strategy important? Why do you need one? Well, the simple answer is that it makes sure that your content is purposeful and is fit for purpose. And then you can measure the return on investment as you spend on it. 
And overall, you know, you want to be successful within the digital space. And as I said, it is a, it is becoming the new gold mine. And if you want to be successful in having the gold, then you need a strategy that is winnable and up to the point. Um, some um, statistics, for instance, back is, is good content increases performance, uh, better performance than traditional um, advertising. Close to about 62% of marketers said digital content, you know, costs less, but also gives them um, the performance like three times more than traditional advertising. And the ROI, which is return on investment, is high. Um, and again, 56% of marketers believe that blogging is more effective and um, provides a better tactic. And 10% say it generates, you know, greatest return on investment. And lastly, it also generates sales for customers. You can have all the sales personnel, but content brings you organic sales, which is also important. And again, there are reports of marketers saying having a good content strategy um, helps them to generate sales. So um, evidence support that, you know, good content strategy is good um, in terms of, you know, better performance than traditional advertising, higher return on investment. It is less um, expensive and it also leads to uh, more sales for companies to augment um, your sales personnel that you may have. So there are different digital content types that you need to be aware of um, in crafting your digital content strategy. And they are into different um, categories. One is um, video, which um, video content, which is like key. We've seen that coming up uh, very strong with companies and brands using short and long videos um, to, you know, advertise and brand their products. So they're posted on websites, websites like YouTube or TikTok um, to, you know, attract new users. And so vlogs, as you've seen, which is vlog stands for video blogs are becoming popular and companies or brands and individuals are using these to promote their businesses. Then we have the blogs and websites where you promote text or content, for instance, which you can also take video content as well. But, you know, these are mostly for education, information, um, you know, writing, uh, uh, educative content, and also, you know, product support, like product usage uh, um, uh, suggestions for customers. User guides um, can be used uh, through websites and also blogs. And so this is also important. This is mostly done through the companies or product website. But if you don't have the technical expertise, you can also go to medium.com, sign up and start writing, producing your digital content um, so easily. Then next is images and infographics. These are very powerful um, ways to, to content types that you, know, you can also produce. Infographics, I love them because they mostly summarize whatever you have to do um, in a very short form. And so for those who don't like reading or watching a long video, you would make use of infographics um, to understand what a product is about, what a company is doing, or like within two minutes or even 30 seconds, you're able to have a better understanding of what it does. And also pictures speak a lot. And so if you don't have the time to write or do a video, uh, video blogs or you don't have the expertise, you can use images or infographics to craft your content strategy and share them on all your uh, Facebook channels that you have, whatever medium, or even your WhatsApp status, you can do that. Um, next will be reviews. And, and in our part of the world, we ignore reviews a lot, but reviews are ways of also, uh, are some content types that we should focus on because it, it, it gives attestation, testimonial and credit to your business. And so it asks your customers to give you reviews, whether on Google or any um, app that you find themselves on TikTok, on um, um, X, Twitter, formerly Twitter, make use of all these um, content types and uh, let the customers leave reviews, which would also go to increase your brand. And as people read the re reviews, they make good decisions and trust your services. And in fact, if you're on marketplaces like Gigi, um, also ask for reviews from your customers and make use of them as part of a content strategy um, that you can employ. And last is podcast. And this is for those who want to be seen as authority in the space you can start a podcast pro, pro, uh, pro, a program where you um, discuss maybe a topic or anything that you know you can do and put it online. Others listen at their free time and then get to understand. And this is where you can give in-depth you know, discussion, your expertise, and put it out there. And the good thing with podcasts is that you can also bring guests um, 
uh, um, content producers to help you. So you bring out on other experts who will come onto your podcast show, you interview them or they speak to a topic and then you put them out there. So um, another strategy to um, build your brand. And last is the new and emerging virtual reality, reality or augmented reality. And this is becoming a new trend in um, um, immersive technology where you can you know, put your content on VR um, devices and give people more like a near experience of um, um, whatever service you have. For instance, this is important for, um, if you look at tourism sectors, if you're in a tourism space, let's say you have a resort, you can um, produce such a content, put it on the VR, and as people watch it, they have like very close experience with your um, resort, and then they'll be enticed to come and experience this in real life. And you can do the same for um, sports experience. We've seen that with um, gaming content, speech as well, and many more ways that you can do this. So these are some content types that you know exist out there, and you need to determine which of them fits into your strategy and what which one you have the expertise in and so um, and most of these you can do with simple tools these days most of the phones allow you to do simple videos that you can post on tiktok so make good use of it um, reviews is something that you can also start asking for people to do on google um, and podcast is a bit technical but with time and if you have the resources you can also set it up um blogging is easy just go to medium.com um, sign up for an account and i think you can start writing and promoting your services so um next then will be we we'll look at crafting the strategy um, some of the things you have to look at and i always say that you need a, a draft a content plan if you want to um and and if you want to go big the best is to have a content plan that you can use so let's take a tourism company for instance they can say within the next three months or six months this is what we want to do so um, let's say for each month you can identify the content topics uh, that you can say let's say i want to cover the dynamics of tourism in kenya in ghana in rwanda or tanzania you choose that and then uh, once you know this is the topics you want to cover these are the areas then you begin to see which of the content types as i said will be relevant for um, this topic if it is a blog an infographic or a video um, tutorial or a video documentary you can do that. Then you go into the production phase where you can then determine, um, let's say, do I have to do two articles per week, one article per week? Is it one infographic, one video, documentary, or tutorial? And so this is a strategy that you have to decide as a, um, a company organization or an individual that you want to do. And then look at the distribution channels. If this if you are targeting the Gen Z um, and you may consider social media, um, if it is the millennials, maybe you're looking at LinkedIn and other um, platforms. So identify, you know, your target group and look at what medium will work. And then it's always good to identify somebody who will be in charge of this activity. If it is a bigger team or you have the resources, you can say it's the marketing team. If you're just an individual, um, well, that would be yourself. But as much as possible, be able to do that and, and, and continue with it. Then let's say each you can do that for each of the months, identify all the different content types, how you want to produce it, the distribution uh, method, and then who is going to be responsible. So it is up to you. This can be a yearly plan. You can just do this for a month or you can do it on a quarterly basis, but it's up to you to then look at this plan and identify what um, strategy will work for you. And once you have the plan, then you can follow through and make sure that you achieve the desired results. Um, once you have the plan, then who is it going to? So I talked about the target audience. You need to identify who the audience is and, and so that you don't shoot in the wild or in the blind, but you want to make sure you have the impact in terms of cost and, and, and also uh, um, results. So identify who your customers will be in terms of age. That's, age could be a seg segmentation. So you look at the demographics. If it is a service or a product for students, then you know who to go for. Um, if it is a clothing line for female and that's where your, your target is, you know how to tailor your advertising, your content strategy to make sure that you, you, you meet or you hit them. If it is a geographical location, then you can also target that region or country. Or let's say you are targeting the diaspora to come to Africa and, and visit your resort, right? So you should tailor your content strategy towards the diaspora and community, their groups, um, where do they read content from, uh, and then let people speak about it and so that they get to hear about your resort. And when they're coming to Ghana, then they can reach out to you and visit. If it is an income group, let's say you're starting to sell luxurious cars, 
um, and you want the content out there and to gain the visibility and to generate leads, then you know who to target to. Um, where can you find this income group of people? And then you do. So there are different um, 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 areas where you can segment. These, uh, these are just examples, but you can expand it based on um, what you are looking at. So the team needs to sit down, identify these target audience segmentation, and then, you know, de develop your content in this direction. So looking at the audience um, segmentation, this is just like another guide. So you can look at what the criteria is. They will look at customer type motivation. So let's say it's customer one, two, and three. You just have to look at what you know um, content strategy will fit with them, how you plan to do this, and you know number of um, employees or the team that you are targeting. Another thing in terms of the content strategy is always to do a competitor check. Um, if you are the only person doing this, then you may not have competitors. But in ninety-five to ninety-nine percent of the case. There's, there will always be a competitor. So let's take a farm radio um, app. It's a, it's a service, for instance. Um, if you are going to advertise, you look at what are the competitors in the space in terms of their traffic volume. And so once you know that, you can then determine um, where is the traffic coming from, what is their um, source. And once you know this, that can also help you um, develop your strategy. What are their popular pages? So you can there are tools that you can use to see for this website, these are the most visited pages. So if you realize that for this app, the most visited pages, uh, maybe how to uh, um, build my uh, maze farm, and that's where most of the customers are going to, then you can also see that maybe I need to tailor my content similar to that, develop content in that area, and you can get some of the customers. So it's important uh, to do that. And also with the competitor check using popular pages, you can see the keywords that you know are mostly used in uh, um, these pages, and then you can begin to add those into your uh, um, heading. We'll look at that later, but add them into your SEO or uh, search engine optimization, your um, content that you're going to put on, and make sure that you know Google will index you, and you could also attract you know customers. And then you also have to determine if your competitor is using organic or paid traffic. So sometimes you see somebody. Um, getting so much traffic for their digital content, um, it may be coming from a paid traffic source. So if you don't have um, enough income to match them, please don't do that. Uh, but if it's for also from organic source, that's good news for you. But um, there, then you can also do better if you have the money to pay and 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 you know get more traffic. So it's a it's a more like a game. Uh, game kind of thing, gameplay in here. And so you look at what your competitors are doing, what are they doing better, where are they falling short? And then you can also uh, be able to do better than them um, in terms of your strategy. Then next will be the content creation. Now you've looked at the uh, audience segmentation, how to do that. Then how, you know, how do you create a content? And some guidelines for content creation I'll say is first to do a keyword search. Um, just carry out keyword search on the topic or anything you want to write to see what you should add in your headline or your description, any part of the content, because the keyword search is always important. And once you find the right keywords and add them, Google indexes them, and also you're able to rank higher in searches, So, which is also important. Whether it's a video blog, um, uh, um, um, a podcast, any of them, you need to add those keywords and you would also find the right you know, leads to, to your website. Then compelling headlines are important. Make it catchy and a clickbait. It's important that you should have that um, so you can also run higher on Google, but also attract people who would want to come. And these days, if you use, um, we'll look at that, but if you use open AI, chat GTP, you can always get compelling headlines um, that you can compare and identify which one is, you know, um, more catchier than the others, and then you can use that. So please um, don't ignore headlines in your, 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 your content delivery. And next is um, focus on quality over quantity. Um, most of us always think by writing maybe a long article or doing a long video, this is how I'm going to have the impact. No, um, I've seen five minute videos that deliver so much quality content than even 30 minutes video. So be go over quality over content and even that you know because the fact is these days reading there's so much digital content that people don't have all the time to spend on um, your content so the, the shorter and um, of higher quality it is the better for people to consume it so focus on that and then we we'll look at visual appeal um, find all the tools thumbnails that you can use to attract uh, people and and so that they are, they are tempted to click or they are tempted to have more time for your content um, on the internet. So one of the 
sites that um, later we'll look at that, but you can go to Canva, um, it's called canva.com. Or there are so many, um, so many image, uh, stock image sites, Pinterest, that you can always go and find some of these royalty free images to use. Then also structure your content. This is very important. So the Google um, robots that are ranking content always look out for structure. You have the introduction, you come with the body, is there a conclusion? And if you are making a set of points, always use bullet points or number them one, two, three. So because they, they make the search engines see that this con content is structured and they're able to index it properly. So once you have the one, two, three, four, five, then they know that this is, uh, it fits into the table structure. This is somebody who is making a point. And, and so if somebody is searching for, let's say top five days, the Google can easily find that structure and give it to the person, right? So make use of um, structure list um, in your content um, delivery. And even if it's a video content, let just get the users follow. So first you do one, I'm going to talk about this. Next, I'll talk about that in that order. And it makes it easier for um, the consumers to follow um, your digital content. And last is call to action. Most digital contents must have an action, right? You want the users to do something, even where it is educational, you want them to go away with something. So always have a call to action in your content delivery. Um, you want them to click to buy something, should they sign up? Is it that they should go out and know that you are the authority or the top restaurant in, in, in Kenya, in Ghana, in Rwanda? This is something you need to do. So always have the call to action um, in your content delivery at the end, at every strategy to make sure that you carry the users along or let them go away with something or that let them perform an action on um, if it is a web page or a video or any content that you know you want them to take an action. Some of the tools uh, then will be for content creation. Um, my suggestion always is their text editors, or you can use your word. Um, if it is a, a CMS content management system like WordPress, you would need or, or uh, Medium, Medium.com, you would need the editor in there. But you can always type them on your Word document, paste in there, and then edit. So, but um, these days, as I spoke about quality, if you can get Grammarly, even the free version of Grammarly helps you to at least let your content meet um, basic standards before it goes online. So have the Grammarly app installed, uh, the, the Word, um, the Microsoft Word plugin, the Google Chrome, uh, Google Docs plugin. There are several of them. Make sure you have all these installed and continue to check your content for better presentation before it goes online. The same with visual um, design. So you may need a visual studio like Photoshop or you need screencast to just record your videos. Or you can sign up on Canva and get uh, most of these um, things. But even the easiest is these days, most smartphones give you the ability to do basic editing. Um, and so make use of them, have your, um, use these, these tools to create your content um, before you, you put them out there. So it gives you time to edit and shoot them before, you know, um, they go out there. The last new one is AI content generator. So I mentioned briefly about open AI, but these days AI is also providing a better way to um, generate content, but also improve our content. So if you're writing, for instance, anything that you, topic you are writing, just go to um, open AI or any AI tool that you know, paste your content and tell the AI to improve your content because that is also important. And then it will improve, check some of the grammar, put a few thoughts together and help you improve it. So AI is always first, you can, the best is generate your content, give it to AI to improve, go back and edit to make sure it reflects your views, your brand and your ideals before publishing it. So these are some of the new um, creation content creation tools that you could use uh, um, for your, your content strategy. But if you just feel lazy, you can also ask AI to help you generate the content or even headlines. So you can put your content in the open AI um, 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 editor and ask it to generate good headlines or catchy headlines, which I spoke about previ previously for this content, and it will help you. And I think the same with uh, um, images and, and, and um, audio. So AI can also generate some good visuals for you. You can um, tell the software or AI you know, tool you are using to generate nice visuals for you or infographics using some information you provide. So make use of these tools. Some are basic, um, like text editors to Grammarly. Others are complex, like AI content generators. But over time, it is um, there are easier ways to help you get quality content um, out there um, in a less, less expensive way. Then um, next, we look at content distribution. It matters where you send the content. So one is websites, um, but you and there are always focus areas within the website. 
optimize your landing pages. Um, and if you are using a website, the landing page is where most often people will go to. Uh, make sure it is optimized, convey the right content, content and direct the users to wherever they need to get whatever content they need. So if it is you are directing them to the blog, let the blog be well visible. If you're asking them to sign on to your newsletter, let that be visible. If you're directing them to, um, to learn more about your services, make sure they are all optimized within the landing page. And then you can also do content cur curation. This is like you discover and gather other relevant content that you can share on your platform. Um, it's called uh, on your website, the affiliate services that allow for that. The content is not yours, but you can get it from other sources, put it on your website, but make sure you credit um, those sources and then you're also good to go. But it's also a way of getting backlinks and, and building your rank within Google. And there's what well, a new one is pillar content and where you do in-depth and comprehensive analysis. So here you can do, let's say, 1,000 to 1,005 words, like a deep dive on a topic that you feel you're an expert and then put it out there. So when people read it, they're like, hmm, this is actually very authoritative. This person knows what they are doing. So you can also then have some of these things whilst you are developing short content, like the 500 to 800 words, the video, short videos. Once in a while, you can shoot a longer video that is a deep dive um, into a particular topic or subject matter uh, for your target audience. So also keep these within the space and mix them with the different content types um, that you are producing. Besides the websites, um, it's also social sites. I think this one, um, most of us are familiar with it, but make sure you use LinkedIn, um, which I realize most Africans are not utilizing very well. So use LinkedIn um, and also Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. So these are easier ways to, um, to do it. And then they are used to share and build your connections uh, for your content on LinkedIn, for instance. But make use of these social sites, again, to distribute your content. Um, most of them are free and easier to use. And so um, leverage them. Then there are untapped um, channels, platforms that we mostly ignore in our content um, distribution and promotion strategies. And so newsletters are like very effective for direct impact. Um, if you have, let's say, customer base, start a newsletter, um, deliver valuable content directly to your customers, let them have access to new products or um, services that you are introducing. And it is a direct way to have better engagement with your customers. Let the, your content go direct to their inboxes so they can read uh, easily or to their SMS inbox or even if it's WhatsApp. So make use of newsletters to send personalized communications to your audience or your customers. Then guest posting is another channel way to get um, content and distribute them. So, you know, you can create um, high quality content and publish on other top ranking websites or the other way around. You can also get, get guest blockers to write content on your website. And so it is um, a two way process, but it helps to build your reputation, your rank within the space. So consider being um, a guest um, blogger or writer or content producer on another um, platform that has more visibility. If you are an early um, content um, person, you need to build your brand and you can always write on the back of others to become popular. There's no crime in that, right? So you can be a guest post, um, guest blogger uh, or content producer on those platforms. But if you are also, you know, you have the reputation and you can also then invite, you know, guest uh, bloggers to write on your, to write and post on your site. And that's a very cheap and easier way to get content. And so you can also expand your reach and reach new um, audiences. So explore whichever one works for you and, and also at which stage you are with your business or your content um, delivery, delivery strategy. The next is sponsored content. Um, this is where you pay for the content. Um, and for instance, you can write your content and have it uh, sponsored on my Joy Online or um, at the Africa Report, any other you know visible channel that you think will give you the right um, traction. So it, there's no crime in also going for paid content, uh, but make sure the call to action you know is well captured. Either you want them to come back to your website or to, you know know something about your business. Um, don't lose that the fact of um, a call to action in in sponsored content. Then um, I think last will be the new um, content commandments. Um, no blasphemy, but some of the things we need is basically I always say write for the audience or produce for the audience, and you know let your content target them and keep it less um, uh, keep it controversial. Sometimes controversial content also work, and then you can provide value. But these are just some of the content guides that uh, you can use. 
so when you deliver content, it's also good to measure. Um, it's not easy simply enough to create, but you measure the impact, right? What you're publishing, what is the impact that is delivering to you as a business? Is the ROI good? And so um, in terms of measurement, you also need to segment them again. Some of the tools that I think sometimes you can use. So let's say if you're building on a website, um, basic tools is Google Analytics. Um, if you just go to Google Analytics uh, or you search for Google Analytics, you are given the ability to sign up and Google would give you um, a code that you can put on your website or a, uh, if it's a plugin that you can install and they'll begin to track um, the data for you. It's very easy and simple as that. But some other third party or paid services, um, Quill Engage, ARF, these are all, all um, other services that you can use. Very free, Some are free, some are low cost. So for email, if you're using MailChimp to send um, email, most of them have uh, um, analytics embedded, at least basic analytics. So see which one will work for you. But of late, I've seen Substack and Pay, I think Paragraph are, are free, you know, email uh, um, delivery services that you can use to deliver your content um, and also reach out to email. So if you, I think the last one is most recommended. Substack is like very easy to set up, it's free. Um, I think for up to some users and gives you most of the value you can you can achieve. So um, sign up for some of these if you want to go to email uh, marketing and you can measure the results. For social, um, there are also platforms that give you organic metrics. So Facebook, for instance, will give you the organic metrics. Pay attention to that dashboard and try to see the number of clicks you are getting for your ads um, or your content, and also to see how best your like your your followers are engaging with your page so you can improve. Other paid ones are, you know, Hootsuite, Buffer, and Simply Measured. So the frequency, I would say sometimes you can monitor them daily to weekly. Some of them you can set the report frequency. Um, but again, there's no hard and fast rule. It's up to you what you want to achieve and how you want to monitor um, your content um, that you are delivering. Um, so this is something that you can always do. Some are less technical to set up. Others uh, require some domain expertise, especially the social uh, um, um, content delivery sites, but uh, all in all, with if you have time, you can easily set up most of these, and it's just good to track your content and make sure that you know you are on track and you are getting the right results. Then, yeah, this is the just like an example, the measurement analytics, be able to find, like divide them into a different area, see how much engagement you are getting for all the sources or the the the, the content distribution mediums that you have. Um, you can say, okay, if this one is delivering 27%, should I continue to improve on that or to optimize the one giving me the least returns, which is maybe item five. So it's up to you to know where your strategy is, what you seek to achieve and, and, and how best to, to go about it. Right. So um, I'll do try to do a case study. Just look at a side of a, the website of um, a Ghanaian company that is into Kudobas. It's delivering um, um, customer reviews for merchants. Um, I'll exit and just go to the page to see. Yeah, I'll share that page again. Yes. Yeah, so I um, hope you can see the screen. So this is Kudobas. And if you go, they are very clear about their communication and they're telling you generate more social reviews and photos, uh, photos and video reviews. It's as simple as that. And you see the call to action. They are simply telling you, you need to sign up for their services. So make sure that your call to actions are usually well captured on the website. And, you know, they're also getting you basically communicating using the website and the homepage and the landing page, which I said, very optimized to help you understand what the business is about and some of the things you need to do. So here's another good call to action. So you're saying collect verified social reviews, read more. So if I want to read more about this, then yeah, I am. This is another page, but was optimized well on the home page. So now I get to see how I can collect verified reviews in a very simple and easy way. So um, so that is that is one example of using call to, op a call to action, a very optimized page, and they are doing this through their website. So this is just like an example of, you know, how best you can have an optimized uh, web page to help, you know, communicate your content strategy and your business. And they also made good use of, uh, um, you know, bullets. You see the structure. They have one, two, three, and all these segments are telling you about certain things you need to know about the business. Then the other one we'll look at is the blog. So now Kudobas then says that to read more content, they are 
think let me go up to the blog. So they have a blog where, yes, so this is also important. Now you see how well laid the blog page is. So you're saying this is our blog and they're delivering. So the content is segmented into different categories. So if you are a business and you have different areas you want, your customers or the audience to know this is another way to organize it and the page is well laid out laid out and i'm seeing this is yeah content is all about review so if i read this i would then say ah these guys are an authority in the space and I'm, i may be interested to sign up with them and also collect social reviews using their product and then delivering the content i think every month as that's a trend i'm seeing september october and you have uh, may you know june so that is this is a way to use your blog to promote your business in terms of digital content and right so and you also need to be consistent this is something at least every month they're posting something and it goes into different categories which is also very important so if i was like looking and you see this is where they do expert interviews i mentioned something like that so this is they've done an expert interview which i would then say are more like uh, guest content. So they are bringing guests onto their platform by interviewing them and getting their inputs into um, the business. So they interview Jason Falls um, and also, you know, Charlene. And this is a very good way to also bring content onto your platform, right? So explore um, all these things on your website or your blog as part of your um, content strategy. And I think another important, and you're right, they also have podcasts, right? Let me see if there's content there. Yes, so they have their uh, podcast that is running on, can listen on Apple, SoundCloud, and even Spotify. So this is also another way to combine all these, um, some of the content types and strategies into um, your, your, your content delivery or your content plan. And so this is also working well for the company because it helps them to show that, it, it helps to show that they are a brand and authority. And the last one I want to look at is they're also using their website to educate their customers, right? So this is their help decks where they are we are explaining their product, how to do a lot of things, you know, call out to collect reviews, setting up widgets, um, social push, coupon rewards. And this is also like a very good way to deliver content and index your page, right? So if you were searching for a tool to help you do any of these, Google is likely to bring up Kudobas and for you to sign up and use their service. So uh, these are some of the ways um, you can, you know, use a combination of the tools to promote your, your, your content delivery strategy um, on your website. If you don't have the skills to build a website, there's no need. You can start with Medium combined with YouTube, and they are very um, simple tools that you can use to begin posting um, and then doing um, cross-posting as well. So you can create a video on YouTube, connect it to your uh, Medium blog, and you can have the same impact. You can post on TikTok and link it to your Medium blog. So don't a multi-approach, a multi-channel approach is good. Um, for having a good content strategy. And I would always say, you know, don't stick to one, explore, experiment, and see what works best and what doesn't. And then from there, you can always improve, iterate, and see, you know, you know how best to improve. So that's the end of um, the, you know, presentation on this. I will then go maybe go into the discussion Q&A session. Um, you can maybe take this stage, um, come online, explain or share some views or opinions. Other ways you think, uh, you know, we can do this better. Yeah, answer questions, ask questions. And then maybe if I answer and it's not well, or you think you can add, please raise your hand and also do it. This is more like a discussion. Um, we're sharing ideas on how best to do this. And so help me compliment whatever I have said. You know, if there's something you think could have been said better, please don't hesitate to add that. Um, I think there's a hand raised. Is there a moderator? Please maybe take the questions and then we can take from there. Uh, I would I would uh, meet the person if the person raises his or okay. her hand. Um, yeah, I think somebody raised their hand, yeah. I can see. A minute. Or oh, you can type your question. Okay, I see a hand up. Uh, let's you can type your question. All right, I see a question. Please, I want to start a free website. Um, where do I start? So I think for a free website, uh, there are several of them. One one option is to go to, um, I think, WordPress, and you can start a simple um, website today. So just go to wordpress.org, and you can start blogging. Uh, but the easiest way for me is medium.com. I don't know if I can type it. Oh, yeah, I don't see the type. But medium.com, M-E, just like medium.com. 
um, it's also a good way to start your blog is you can start there. And once you have the traction, you have the numbers, then you can create a website. If a full website is sometimes difficult to manage, if you are not a tech person and you need to maintain it. So you can start with a blog on Medium and then later you can migrate to um, a website. But if you just want a simple website to also start without any technical expertise, I think WordPress um, also allows individuals to host free um, websites um, as a subdomain, and you can also do that. So explore WordPress, explore WordPress, medium.com, and you should be in a good position to start building uh, your, your website, your brand, or your content strategy. Okay, there's a second question. Please, can you lay emphasis on the new content commandments? I didn't get that one. Yeah, so the commandments uh, we're looking at is one is um, you should, you know, be able to focus on um, good quality content. Let me just get back to that. But also making sure that the content is relevant for uh, the target audience. And two um, is that you should, you know, always target um, delivery and also the greatest impact. But let me just get back to that. Great, so, but basically the content uh, commandments are giving you what you have to do to, you know, have the desired impact. And as I said, you need to keep it converse, conversational. Yes, yes, yeah, make sure that there's, it's of high quality for the audience. Um, so one is, write for the audience, don't write for any everybody, but your target audience. So if you are targeting, let's say, um, high school students to sign up for your website, write for them. If you are targeting tourists to come to your services, to come and patronize your facility, please also write for them, right? And keep it con conversational. Um, I've always seen writings that are very dull and boring, but just try to keep it conversational, right? Let the user feel like they are talking to you um, in the process. And then you should also provide value. You know, it is important. If somebody has come to read content on your website, it must be of high value, right? Um, because there are several other content uh, creators out there. So yours must be of high value. And, you know, you need to find a fresh angle. And because it, if you have a consistent angle, consistent angle, it becomes boring and out of date over time. So always find a new and fresh angle um, that you can present and let the users stick to you or be eager to read your content. So for instance, I, I deliver a newsletter to um, university students and every week my strategy is what new angle do I need to bring on board? And so you have to always think strategically and see what are the trending issues? How can you ride on the bandwagon of an, a new stuff and then deliver content, right? So always find fresh angles every time to, to do that. And you also need to publish consistently. Um, I always say if you are an individual and you have the time, once a week is a good time to publish content um, and just always write. If it's, for instance, if it's not a, a pillar um, content, which I explained earlier, if it's not a deep dive, Sometimes 500 to 800 words is enough to put it out there. As I said, focus on the quality and put it out there. So once a week, um, if you want to um, get rank, if you want to rank higher, you should think of once a week um, and publishing consistently. Um, and also share strategically, you know, identify where you need to share your content um, and, and have the strategy. So for instance, I know a gaming company, Meta, that was trying to target the user. So they would share the content on Facebook, very few clicks. Um, Twitter was X, Twitter now X wasn't helping. But guess what? TikTok brought them most of the, like the traffic in terms of download. So, um, and because the game was targeting the youth. And once they started having TikTok influencers produce content for them and also sharing their content, uh, the game and the gameplay on TikTok, then the, the installs increased. They had, they had a huge community um, supporting the game. So, you, so you should always um, be able to identify these and then share strategically. I think yeah, these are the new. Well, well, I mean, you had you had your hands up. Can you ask your question? Yeah. So uh, is it Blaze or Blazy? Blaze. You're right. The first one. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for the so, I, 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 
Can I record her representation? Sorry, I couldn't hear you all, please. Can you repeat? We have a presentation of Kwame, Kwame, your network is bad. Can you type yeah. your question? Oh, what I heard is can I have your presentation? Yes, can we have a recording? Of yes, they, they, the session is recorded and will be put on African Digital Schools YouTube link. So please kindly check that. Um, okay. Latest by uh, sometime this week or next week. Thank you, Kwame. Okay. Right. Then my second question is: If you do the block, because maybe you are not an expertise on website, can you migrate all the things that you block to your website? Can you do that? Okay, your line was breaking. I had migration. You do block. Can you migrate content or something? If you're correct, Kwame, your network is bad. Can you please? type your question or if I didn't get it well, can you type your question so that Blaze can figure out? But what I heard is if you do a blog, can you migrate it to another blog or another session? That's that's I think that's what Kwame is referring to. Thank you, Kwame. I've done that. I've Sorry, I still can't. Okay, so Kwame, 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 please kindly type your questions, and I think that Blaze is here to answer your questions. But what I, uh, what, what I got is, Blaze, is it possible if I created my blog on WordPress platform, can I move it to uh, other CMS, content management system? Mm -hmm. How do I do that? How do I get my content? Right. Um, if that is the question, it is very possible and easy to do. So yeah, most of these plugins have uh, these content platforms have um, plugins for importing content from the other platforms. So they are all competing to get people to their platforms, right? So they build in um, tools to help you import that. So yes, you can import from uh, Medium.com to WordPress. You can imp import from WordPress to Medium and uh, and vice versa. So yes, it is allowed and it it is possible. Um, I would say in 80 to 90% of the cases to move your content from one platform to the other. Okay, I see that Kwame has typed his questions. He has three questions. Can you convert your blog items to a website? Number two, we have, well, uh, we've answered the second question of recording. It will be on African Digital Skills website. The third question, can you migrate my blog items to a website? Yes, I think, like, let me take that again. Um, you can migrate from a blog to a website uh, um, seamlessly. It may not be 100%, right? But you would get it in most of the cases. And then with a this few- This is a edits. whole lot of work. Where is it? In what engine room? Then it will like, work. Then, room with big flow, space. Flow, oh, yeah, like Florence. Hi. Yeah, can you please move? Yeah, so that is um, 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 possible. Sorry. Yeah, and then the next one is um, you if you can turn your blog into a website, it is you can turn the blog um, into a website if you want to. So if it's a medium blog, what you then have to do is to create a website on, let's say, if it's WordPress, and then you export your content and import it. So that's the best way to do it. Uh, but you can you can also convert the blog into the website. Let me even medium allows that, but it's a paid version. I think you need to pay five dollars a month or is it two dollars a month so you can then have the blog as less like your website you have menus it looks more like a website but it's hosted on medium.com so uh but you have your own name everything that you want so the answer is yes technically it is possible to always do these things some will require paid um, versions others uh not paid because the platforms actually want you to come and so they have a plugin that can help you migrate the content Okay, Blaze, I, I hope that brings us to the end of the questions. Uh, we're saying that we need a big screen to have all these questions displayed so that others can also participate yeah. and see this subsequently. Uh, so if there is no questions, do you have any last words, last remarks? Um, yes, uh, yeah. Last remarks to what we can do. I mean, I, mm. what we haven't touched on a bit is uh, traffic, I'm sure, which is also another thing. Is another yeah. ball or a whole a whole lot of uh, because as startups as young people starting 
blogs, it's not just about putting the blog out there, it's about how do you generate traffic? How do you make the eyeballs read what you are doing? I'm sure that it's 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 if it's another session, if you want to organize another session sometime next year to talk about that, I hope, I hope that will be helpful. Yeah, sure. Um I think yeah, traffic is a good thing. I briefly touched on that, but I think I'll be happy to do a deep dive um, into that. Maybe something to consider for next year's session, but traffic um, is good. Most of them, um, you should be look, looking at, you know, uh, affiliates and, and that's a deep dive, but a short one would be affiliate. Um, one is a way to always get content. So you can get affiliates to post and, you know, um, share your content. Next one um, also is you can always do um, you know cross posting. So once you have your content, you partner with other blogs. And I've also seen that you post on this and then they also cross post for you. And that's another way to gain traffic. But um, as um, Florence said, uh, we we'll leave that for maybe another time and then we can take it up. But all in all, I would say um, content is really good for whatever you are doing. Um, even these days, governments need content strategies to make sure um, they reach the right target within the digital age. And we've seen even governments coming online with Facebook pages, with Twitter pages and all that. So I would say uh, master your content, focus on quality, uh, be consistent. And over time, you would become, you know, the, the, the authority within the space. And you can always start easily, um, you know, just getting basic content out um, and, and also being unique in your own way. Explore the different content types and the platforms available. For me, for instance, I'm more like a LinkedIn um, writing, blogging person. I've done a few videos, but um, that's not my specialty. So I usually focus on um, writing um, and posting on LinkedIn, posting on my Medium blog, my websites and things like that. But if you are the person who likes to talk and engage, go for it. So it's up to look at your personality and where you think your strengths are. But if it's for a corporate account to you, you, you need to then go for a corporate strategy to see <clears throat> what you want to do, what the plan is, and then you can execute it, you know. Um, but also, I, I would go again, let's also explore email marketing. You can always combine email um, newsletter newsletter marketing in addition to all other strategies. Once in a while, just go personal and intimate with your audience and email them into their inboxes and share, you know, exclusive content with them. Um, and also, the, the, you know, having a uh, guest blog and post is also important. Just go out, tell people, hey, if you want to write or share any content, we are available. Come and, you know, post freely. But if you also see these options elsewhere, post. And then what? how you get your brand is under the post, you can just say, this is a guest post by X, Y, Z person who is the author or the, you know, the owner of this website. So over time, you're also gaining visibility um, and also traffic to your website. And Google would index you to the backlinks that are generated. So I would say um, explore these, the untapped options. Um, always start low. Don't start spending so high if you're not sure of the content strategy. Explore the other options. And then over time, once you find a sweet spot, then you can spend money to pay for ads and make sure you have the desired impact. I would say thank you very much for sharing this moment with me. Questions were great. And then um, it's still open if there are things that you feel could have been added, as Florence said, please, um, maybe let's continue to discuss. Um, and then, you know, if there are opportunities to answer questions after this, I'm still available. Thank you once again. And then look forward maybe to seeing another session like this next year, God willing.